Wow. Oh my gosh. Rotten. That is our core material. Not good. And that really brings home the saying, rotten to the core. So whilst we were fitting our brand new cubic mini wood burning stove, if you haven't seen that video, it's actually this one here. I'll also pop a link right in the top of the description so you can go and check that one out. But whilst we were drilling a hole in the core for our flue to exit, a piece of core, mind you, that looked in impeccable condition, not too far away from that proximity wise, we noticed some of the deck looked a little bit sketchy and upon further investigation revealed that the core wasn't great everywhere. So this here is the point that our D-rings for our main sheet attached to. And we noticed that, well, the other side was leaking. We started to notice a bit of cracking here and then it was leaking underneath. So pending a bit of further investigation, that has led us to this. So that was the backing plate that went through the hull. And as you can see, not only has it bent, I guess where the cores weakened and started giving away, but it split all the way along the side there. Again, where the force of the main sheet would have been yanking hard, and then the structural integrity of the, the core of the boat, the hull, is obviously not great in that spot. This is the starboard side, and that a tiny bit of dampness there. There's a little bit of dampness here, but it still feels solid, so the problem isn't as bad. The problem is as bad here, but I think we'll take them both off anyway as a point of measure. Just have a, an inspection around here, see if there's anything we feel we need to do. I think it's fair to say that that side, that side's a total rebuild. Buy an old boat, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> oh, it's sunny today, and apparently it's gonna be nice and sunny tomorrow. So I imagine this is about as good of opportunity as we're going to possibly get for the winter, so. May as well tackle it now. And freshly tipped off to the fact that I was getting a little bit trigger happy here with the power tools, our boat guardian angel, Andy from Willet Marine, once again making a guest appearance just to make sure that we're steering this repair in the right direction. But it doesn't look as if this is the first time that this sort of area here has been interfered with. Yeah. I think that's probably come out of the deck before and that's when someone welded them to plates. Mm. Uh, which, in fairness, has worked for yeah. a while, well, you know. So then just cleaning all this off, as you say, gives that a better bond mechanically with whatever you put on top. Yeah, you can see where the contaminants are, where the, some of the dirty colours are. The smell is like a sulfury, horrible, typical fibreglass sort of that's been immersed in water type smell for a long time. Okay, so, so that it, actually changes the way it smells. Well, yeah, it releases it. So it's like a bit like opening up the, the pores of the glass that releases the smell. And also, to a certain extent, some of the residual moisture, perhaps. Okay. That's a nice fit in there, Dom. Yeah? Yeah. You can see the shape that we're trying to match around here. Yeah. So we've just got to taper our little bits of plywood and we can slide them all in, a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter that they're in different bits because all we're asking of it is to create a solid divide between the inner skin and the outer skin. So together, everything becomes strong. We're not asking ultimate strength from any one piece. No, and I suppose we're going to tap into the bulkheads as well, aren't we, to really utilise the strength? Yeah, transfer the load. It's over the top, but you know, why not if we can? Yeah. 
So the plan is to keep a slight gap between each section? Yeah, so we know we've got plenty of epoxy um, and we're going to mix the epoxy with a silica, uh -huh. which is like a, a structural thixotropic um, dust, really. And then we'll just have plenty of that in all the holes, put the ply in, make sure it's between everything, smooth, smooth off the surface and let it cure. And then the next stage will be to then taper our laminate into the core that we've added, ready to put new laminate in right. the epoxy resin. Now, whilst Andy stepped off of the boat to mix up some more resin, I jumped back in board Kadoa just to make sure none of that new resin would be able to leak through into the saloon. thought process behind this consist consistency of epoxy is basically... So it doesn't drip off the stick, okay. like that, that's quite nice. And then when we, we're going to force this in all the voids, and when our plywood core goes in, we want it to be able to move around it. Okay. Then, you know, there are going to be areas that we can't get the stick to, so we want the epoxy to venture into those little spaces um, and work for us rather than against us if you make it too thick. Okay. So after we'd finished bedding our new mix of wood core and resin, we needed to give the repair at this point a little bit of time to cure. After which, Carly lightly sanded the top layer of this repair, ready for the waterproofing layer of fiberglass. Splurge a load of that in there. I think I'm going to get for a lot of um, gloves. So you uh, need to let that cure before anything sort of rubs it or knocks it. Okay. Cover it um, with just that. I yeah. think, don't think it's going to rain for a little while keep the heat inside the boat so yeah. that the heat goes through yeah. it that way and then I would have thought in about six hours it was would mostly be cured. Cured enough? Wonderful. Yeah? Yeah. I'll pull the tent tight over it then. So that's where we're at so far with the new repair. We are basically just waiting for a break in the weather before we take that gel coat and the old layers of fiberglass back before feathering all of that in to the new core. Now we have also just picked up a couple of really exciting new additions for our wood burning stove and this is for our project 365 which we're both super excited about. Basically the goal is to be able to unplug Kadoa from the mains power grid, the mains water grid for a full year, 365 days. Now I've created a web page on our site that you can go to and read in much more detail, hopefully what this challenge is going to entail, the what's, the why's, the how's, and it will give you a much deeper insight into really what's motivating us to set this challenge in the first place. But it's one we're really excited about. The website has also undergone a huge revamp and we're in the process currently of building something a tool which we hope is going to provide some real value to others out there that are sailing around these beautiful waters of the UK. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. If you haven't done so already, check the website out. I'll pop a link again right at the very top of the description and just go and explore. You'll find out more about us, who we are, our past, how we came to find ourselves here. There's more about the boat and so much more. Anyway, we just wanted to touch base, say 
Hope you all had a happy Christmas and here's to a healthy and happy 2023. Just a quick update from us and we'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.